Why did Andy Soderbergh, also known as Media Man 3D, start the Hero Me Master Suite and how did he develop all the different parts for the project? We discussed this in a recent interview on this channel. This is part of a bigger playlist, which I've also linked down in the description. In those videos, we talk about how the Hero Me Master Suite came to life, what's new with Hero Me Gen 6, the new part cooling ducts, design principles and compromises, as well as the new monetization of the documentation through Patreon, and finally, the future of Hero Me, what new things are coming. So let's jump right into the interview, how it all started. I, I'm interested, since I have been using the Hear Me upgrades on my printers, um, I didn't look back too far. So the only thing that I actually knew was Hear Me Gen 5, but I'm interested. Where did this all start? Okay, so I have to give absolute credit where credit's due. The, the Hear Me was created by Kilo Kara. That's his, his handle. His name is Marcelino uh, Mosquea. I probably am messing up his last name. Uh, a gentleman mm -hmm. from uh, the Dominican Republic who did the very, very first uh, Hero Me back in July of 2018. And I actually got involved with him on a previous design of a cooling system that was a precursor to the Hero Me, giving him feedback and making tweaks and testing for him, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then when he did the Hero Me, again, we did the same thing, tweaking, testing, and, and, and modifying it. But by late September, early October of 2018, he had to back away from being online. Uh, he had a baby, his wife had a baby, and so he had to focus on that. And so he kind of disappeared from the scene. I connected with him. So I start then making mods for myself, but I connected with him a few months later and said, hey, you know, I'm building out this stuff. Uh, do you mind me doing it? I still have, you know, giving you credit, et cetera. But he saw that I'd now, by then, I think it was Gen 1 or Gen 2, instead of just supporting the CR10 and the Ender 3, I was supporting, you know, a bunch of different printers and hot ends. Mm -hmm. And he gave me his blessing. So since um, late October, 2018 uh, through now, there's been gen one, two, three, four, five, and and now gen six. That's that's a lot of iterations in a pretty uh, short time, actually. Um, yeah, there's been a, a lot of great feedback. I mean, the, the, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, key thing that's different uh, about my design than his is the standardization. That's one of the things I think that really helped the Hero Me take off Mm -hmm. is that this base file, whether it be on the top, the bottom, the two sides or the back, these positions uh, of these mounting points are absolutely locked in stone, right? And yeah, so yeah. that whether there are different cooling ducts, different fans, different extruders that fit on the top, uh, different hot ends inside, the shell and the frame and the positioning is all the same. There's now over 600 remixes and add-ons that the community... And, I stopped counting at 600. There's probably a lot more now than that. Um, so that's, I think oh, yeah. that's one of the original design principles, besides being a great cooling system to really, we can talk about that, of, of, of what's going on with mm -hmm. cooling. But one of the design principles was this modularity and uh, standards base so that um, other people could do their own tweaks and additions and know that it would be for it's both forward and backward compatible yeah that sounds you you have a pretty great community there i'm i'm curious like wh when do you make the decision to uh to make something yourself for hear me or where do you rely on the community to do it themselves because i can i can imagine that having so many different variations to create yourself if uh, do you have all of the printers for example so i, I do have quite a quite a few printers i've had i think about 20 printers since mm -hmm. 2014 Many of them are mothballed. Uh, the first one was uh, <laughs> Micro M3D, uh, um, uh, M3D Micro. It was a Kickstarter project back mm -hmm. in 2014. And then I had uh, the, the Tico, which was also a, a failed Kickstarter project, but I actually was one of the few people that got one. Uh, I've got a couple of WANHOW Duplicator I3s. Uh, I've got four Ender 3s that have all been heavily, heavily upgraded. I've got uh, an Ender 5 Plus. Uh, a Two Trees Sapphire Pro, and now four Prusa MK3S Pluses, um, and then a couple of resin printers. Okay. Uh, so uh, a lot of different ones, but obviously that's the thing about you know the open source communities is you make a mod, you share it, uh, you pass it on, other people make mods, and then people would start to say, well, gee, can I have this? Can I have that? And so mm -hmm. you know I've got, a I've got a different fan than you did. You know, can you make your duck work with my fan? And so it just kind of grew and grew and grew out of there. So now with the, the latest release, the latest update uh, that I'm doing with Gen 6, it's now over 300 parts. 
Awesome, awesome. That sounds like a lot of work. That was part one of my interview series with Andy Soderberg about the Hiromi Suite. In the next part, which I've linked here for you, we are talking about what is new with Hiromi Gen 6 and interesting facts about the new part coding ducts. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.